In this interesting example, they ask us to find all the settled points of the function x equals no, x times sine of y over 3. I plotted using Wolfram Alpha, and it gave me this beautiful picture of the curtain, or maybe folded napkin. As you can see, there are lots of settled points. Look at that. Seems like something like here, and like here, and like here. So I would predict it will be infinitely many settled points. And it looks specifically like so. There is a heat control map developed as well. And that also shows you uh, the location of all the settled points. So I'm expecting to have infinitely many of them. But let's actually find it mathematically. To do so, we, as always, start with finding partial derivatives. So partial derivative with respect to x is sine y over 3. Partial derivative with respect to y will be x stays, let me do slowly for you, sine of, okay, derivative of sine is cosine of y over 3 times derivative of the function inside, which is y over 3, gives you one third. Here it is. Third equal to zero, third equal to zero. I would solve this first for y and then plug it into this one. So it's equation number one and equation number two. When sine y over three gives you zero, where there are infinitely many points as you should know, <laughs> hopefully you do, where are these points? When y is 0, sine of 0 is 0, then at pi, to be pi inside, y should be 3 pi, then 3 pi over 3 gives you pi, sine of pi uh, is 0, so that works, then 6 pi, and so on, and you can always add plus and minus, plus and minus, and let's keep going. The graph, I even have the graph for you, looks like so, as you can see. When does this sine y over 3 gives you 0 at these points? So, 0, 3 pi, minus 3 pi, and keep going. Well, you plug these points, infinitely many points, plug into equation number 2. That will give you partial derivative with respect to y will be now x multiplied by cosine of all of these points, and let's think in a second what it is, times one third. I would move this one third over here. And it's now solve for x to make it zero. So my cosine has y over three. Y is zero. Right, cosine of, so let's do y is 0. Then I have x over 3, cosine of 0 is 1, gives you 0. x is 0. y is plus or minus 3 pi. Then I will have x x over 3 times 3 cancel that with one third it will be cosine of pi so it's going to be plus or minus 1 right so cosine of pi is 1 a uh, cosine of pi is 1 minus pi actually is also 1 because it's even function so just 1 gives you 0 x is again 0 and so on and so on, 6 pi will give you cosine of 2 pi, so it gives you plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1. Oh, actually, it is minus 1. Yeah. So this is a special case. When we get an infinite number of solutions, we can uh, say that this is... that in this case, we have x always to be 0. So I will say thus x is 0 for all y's, which are not all 0. It's 0 plus or minus 3 pi, plus or minus 6 pi, and so on. 
We need to express it somehow uh, and actually justify that this hopefully give us settled points. So the settled point comes with the determinant f x x f x y f y x f y y being negative. That's uh, what we're trying to get to get a settled point, right? Settled point s at the point we're looking for x y. So x is always zero and y is keep changing. Let's find this. What is our f x x? If I'm looking at the first derivative with respect to x, it's sine y over 3. So with respect to x, it gives me 0. That's it. Well, okay, not uh, really enough. That gives me that this product will be 0. But then it's important what this product gives me, something positive or something negative. So now only mixed derivative matters. When I'm taking derivative x with respect to y, with respect to y, it's going to be one third sine y over 3. One third sine y over 3. Actually, the derivative of sine is cosine, cosine y over 3. At all y's we are choosing, I just explained to you that cosine gives you 0. Cosine gives you 1 all the time. So this will be 1. When you plug y equals 0, it's 1. When you plug plus or minus 3 pi, it's also 1. Because cosine is even, it swallows the negative sign. When you plug plus or minus 6 pi, it's also going to be 1. So, it will be 1 third if you plug your 0 y's, right? Which is positive. These, these two conditions give us the information that determined will be positive or negative yes determined will be f x x is zero f y y we could find it but it doesn't matter now the whole thing will be zero this will be one third this will be one third because no matter what i plug into this cosine it gives me one so it will be zero minus one ninth and it doesn't matter it is Negative, yeah. It doesn't even matter that it is, uh, why did I say positive? That it is minus one ninth. It, what matters is that it is negative. Since it's negative, we can say that we got saddle points. Saddle points occur at zero, comma. So x is always zero, remember that. Do you remember why? Because no matter what we plug here, it will be multiplied by x. And when I set it equal to 0, x gives you 0 again, again, and again. So I can put and so on. So x is always 0. Why y can be expressed as 3 pi n. When n is plus and minus. Well, we can actually start with 0, if you remember. 0, 3, plus minus 3 pi, plus minus 6 pi. So n can be 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. Or sometimes people say 0 is from 0 to infinity. Uh, sometimes people say like so, 0 comma infinity, and there's a bar at the top saying that it's uh, running from no, 0 to infinity but also minus infinity why not plus minus infinity and this is my answer y goes here
This is a very unusual question for like extra thinking, analyzing what does it mean to have infinitely many solutions and how to justify they indeed give you subtle points. Well, thank you for watching.